All right, we welcome San Diego State's crew to the stage. Uh, student athletes Jaden Le Jaden Ledee, Darion Trammell, and Elijah Saunders. Head coach Brian Dutcher will follow the standard format of a uh, brief opening statement from coach, followed by questions for the student athletes, and then we'll return to questions for the coach. Um, the standard reminders, please silence your cell phone. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please remember to uh, state your name and media affiliation uh, with each question. That's for the uh, transcription folks. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. We'll address questions in the room first and then get to Zoom if time allows. And uh, please do not record press conferences in this room on cell phones or cameras. They'll be available to download when this session's over. And if you could direct questions to specific student athletes, that helps the audio folks. So we'll open with a quick uh, statement from Coach. First of all, I want to congratulate Coach Jones and Yale on an outstanding season. Uh, they had our full attention. Uh, we knew they were good. We watched how they played against Auburn, and we were focused and ready to play. And that's a credit to my team. So I'm proud of our effort. Uh, we're advancing to the Sweet 16. We're heading on the road, play a road game against UConn and Boston. And I've got a group that I think will be up for the task. All right, questions for San Diego State student athletes. Right here. Uh, hey, to do this already to move you guys ahead, Darren and Jaden, what do you think about getting another crack at UConn? Um, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, we we kind of had a little bitter taste in our mouth last year after they beat us, but I mean, we get to you know play them again, and they're a great team. We're gonna get back game plan and you know get ready to play them in Boston. Uh, yeah, I think we're just excited. Uh, we get to get another crack at them. Um, obviously, they won the national championship last year. Um, but I feel like we were right there. Um, just to get another chance at it, I think we're up for the opportunity. We have the team to do it. Uh, I got one for Darion and one for Elijah. Um, Darion, what is it about this time of year and you? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's just the competition. Uh, I love the competition. Um, I love a chance to show um, who I am, uh, where I come from. It's just an opportunity to do that. Just, I think that's what, what makes me play um, better in this time and with so much confidence. Um, Elijah, you were, you were matched on Danny Wolf. Um, just talk about the challenge there, and, and uh, you, you shut him down pretty well. Uh, yeah, he's a very versatile uh, player, for, especially for his size. Um, you know, he's capable of doing a lot on the floor. So, you know, just trying to contain him and do my best to see how I close him out and, <clears throat> um, you know, try to keep Jaden out of foul trouble, so have me on him. <laughs> so. Um, that's, that's all I was trying to do. Please state your name before you ask your question. Thanks. James Foreman Aldrich with the Argonaut. Uh, Jane, you had a big game against UAB and then a big game tonight. You know, just what the big difference was between the close game you had against UAB and then the, the 28 point tonight? Um, just, you know, just staying focused. I mean, um, that's really all it is, just out there playing and fall, executing the game plan and letting it, you know, flow with my teammates. I mean, that's, that's really all I'm doing out there. Chris Bearing here with East Village Times. Jaden, you mentioned yesterday after practice that the defensive rebounding from Yale is what stood out to you and the team. How do you think you guys did out there today? You only allowed 20 defensive rebounds. I think we did pretty good. I mean, uh, we, we limited them to tough shots, tough twos. That's what the game plan was. Uh, we didn't let three and four get off with the threes. And um, we limited them to their second chance points, and we hit the glass pretty hard. So I'm happy with the victory. I mean, we, we came out victorious. That's what we tried to do. Tim Booth with the AP. Darion, uh, 13 threes tonight for you guys. I think it's a season high. Why do you feel like the outside shooting was significantly better tonight than it was on Friday? Uh, I think we just got the hardest game out the way. Uh, first game is definitely always the hardest. Um, obviously, we go out there and play confident, but I feel like getting that first one under our belt, uh, we come out much more loose and much more confident. And uh, We were getting open shots. Uh, we've been putting the time and putting the work. and. There's no reason to go out there and, and be hesitant. So I think we just let it fly tonight. More questions for student athletes? Uh, Mark Zewer, San Diego Union Tribune. Maybe if all of you guys can answer this. Um, following up on that, I mean, you guys have not shot the ball well. You were 306th in the country in three-point shooting coming in tonight and make 13 of them. 
Um, is there just something about this tournament? Is there something about, you know, being calm? Um, what is it about, you know, that makes you guys play this way at this point of the season? Jaden, let's start with you and work our way out. I think it's just, you know, it's March. I mean, it's, we know the severity of the situation. So, I mean, you know, it's either you win or you go home. And, you know, these two guys next to me, we got experience from last year. So, I mean, we knew we weathered a storm for the first game. And the second game, we was ready to play a lot more relaxed. Yeah, just playing more relaxed. Um, percentages aren't really, really that important. Uh, guys are going to play out of their minds. Some guys are not ready for the moment. I think we had a lot of guys on this team that were just ready for the moment. Uh, yeah, I'll echo off what DT said with the percentages. Um, you know, I don't know what our percentages are, but I see people on Twitter say <laughs> some stuff about our threes. But, you know, every shot I take, I feel like it's going in. Um, I don't know what I shoot from three, but whatever it is, I feel like I shoot better than that. <laughs> I'm sure all the guys on the team agree. So um, just believing that every shot you shoot is going in, regardless of, you know, how, how it's been in the past. Again, here with East Village Times, Darion, what does it mean for you to see your fellow senior, Kate Alger, score some points at the end of the game tonight? <laughs> uh, got me excited. Uh, you know, he, he's been putting in the work. Um, he gives us a great look on scout team. Um, he's usually one of the best bigs um, when we play against scout. And uh, he gives us great looks. And so just to see him go out there and, and just get a bucket um, and have the opportunity to play on this stage, is, I mean, it's great. Um, and it's, I mean, he deserves it. All right, we'll dismiss these three from the stage and say thank you, and we'll return with questions for Coach. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thanks, guys. All right, questions for Coach Dutcher. Uh, James Torman Aldridge with the Argonaut again. Uh, Coach, it's not often that even in the regular season you get to play 14 guys. Uh, just what it means to be able to have pretty much your whole rotation out there tonight getting getting minutes. It's like a dream come true as a coach that you've got guys that put all the work in and they get in some regular season games at the end. But uh, to play on the only game on TV at this hour uh, in the NCAA tournament and play on the biggest stage and get minutes, get baskets, be able to go out and enjoy yourself, uh, that's a reward that they deserve and sometimes they don't get but it was great that they could enjoy that tonight. Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. How much has the national championship game last year been a reference point, if at all, for you guys this year? And how much will it be a reference point this week? I reference it when I try to boost their confidence and say they've got experience on the biggest stage, that this is nothing new to them, that just go out there, enjoy it, play fearless. This is the time of year to be fearless. And don't worry about making a mistake. Play your best. And we have experience in the tournament, and I think some of that experience showed over the last two games. Mark Severson, you Union Tribune. Um, UConn's had an incredible season this year. They're the number one overall seed. I think a lot of teams might be a little frightened about playing. I didn't get the impression hearing your guys that they're intimidated at all by them. No, that's the beauty of being young. <laughs> I'll be intimidated, but I'll, I'll get them ready to play, and we'll go out there and we'll play in a hostile environment in Boston against uh, a great UConn team and see where it ends up. That's the beauty of playing these games. So we're going to go in with a game plan and with a bunch of guys that believe they can win, and we'll see how it ends. Tim Booth with the AP. Brian, this is the second straight year you've had a 13 seed as your second-round opponent. You've kind of imposed um, yourselves on them. And, and not really let them in the game. Is it as simple as Darion was saying, is once you get through the first game, some of the nerves and go away and you do relax? Or is there a, a maturity about your group that you know doesn't look ahead beyond what a seeding or a, a team from a small conference might be? Yeah, well, we're, we're not a power five school, even though I think we're a power five team. And so we're the last team in the country that's gonna turn our nose and, and pretend like uh, we're superior to anybody. You know, we, pl we practice hard, we play hard, and we respect everybody we play. So we're not looking at the seed, we're looking at the opponent. And, and that's kind of how we do things at San Diego State. And it, there we go, right here. Um, the Mountain West had a, another tough result today, a 39-point loss in the tournament. Um, 
you're the only team left in, in, the, in the conference. Um, you know, the conference has been bashed a little bit. Do you feel like you're kind of carrying the torch for it now? And what are your thoughts on, on the performance of the rest of the conference in the tournament? I, I don't think it's any small wonder we're here because we had the highest seed, you know? So seeding's important. And some of the teams in the conference didn't get seeded high, and so they had really hard opponents in the first round, second round. So these games can go either way. So uh, seeding's important, and we've taken advantage of our seed. Uh, we put the work in to get that seed. We don't duck anybody. We play anybody that wants to play in the non-conference. And so we don't win a conference title. We still have a chance to get a high seed, and we've taken advantage of that seed again this year. Anything more for Coach? Please remember to state your name. Uh, Mark Zucker, San Diego Union Tribune. Um, same thing I asked Elijah, the decision to, to have him guard Wolf and, and how you think he did. Yeah, well, Jay Powell, we didn't put him on Wolf because we thought Wolf maybe was too strong for him and would post him up. And we thought Elijah, if Wolf did go inside, uh, was capable of banging with him a little bit because he has more strength. And so we made that shift to uh, uh, get Jaden on Nolling at that point when, Jay, uh, when Elijah came in. We switched the matchup up. And I thought it worked out pretty good. I thought Elijah played really well. And then Jay didn't have to guard as much on the perimeter. Noling's more of an inside player. And so that matchup suited us better for this game. Ben Rabb, Yale Daily News. Coach, you said you're willing to play anyone in the non-conference. Coach Jones speaks a lot about trying to schedule a tough team for Yale. Would you be willing to play the Bulldogs next, next season in the non-conference schedule? I'll play anybody but Yale. <laughs> <laughs> no, they tried to schedule us. I mean, I, Coach Jones schedules hard. I mean, played at Kansas, played at Gonzaga, at Santa Clara. So we've had talks with them. So we'll continue to have discussions. And if we think it fits both teams, like I said, uh, it'll be a, a – I'm not going to travel east to play a game, but if they will be willing to come out and play us, we'd entertain that on a one-game type deal. And they're going to be good next year. So it'll be a real challenge. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Congrats, man. Good luck. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. that Iowa State Stanford women's game. Uh, oh, yeah, Stanford beat them.
contractually obligated. I can't wear my Yankee hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, was hiding, I was hiding in the elevator today and I couldn't get it. a call in a game. God damn it. <laughs> We welcome the Yale contingent to the stage, Coach Jones with Matt Noling and August Mahoney. Uh, we'll follow the standard format. Um, please, as a courtesy to those working in here, silence your cell phones. Um, when you ask a question, please provide your name and media affiliation every time. Thank you very much. Um, hail the microphone holders with, by raising your hand. We'll get those to you. Um, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. Um, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this area is prohibited. You'll be able to download those uh, after this session's over. And if you would direct questions to specific student athletes, um, that would be terrific and helpful for the audio folks. So we'll go ahead and open with a uh, statement from Coach Jones. Coach? Um, first, I'd like to tip my hat off to San Diego State. They played a tremendous game today. Um, they're not known to be a great three-point shooting team, but they saw me coming and they figured they'd make them all today. Um, they, you know, they played well defensively. We struggled to make some shots early on. I thought that hurt us. Thought we splintered a little bit in terms of our co connectivity, which hurt us. Um, you know, our guys battled. It just was not our day. I, I told them in the huddle, um, you know, basketball gives you life lessons and. You know, the lesson that we learned today that everything's not going to be sunshines and roses for you. You have to fight through and, you know, you're going to have a sandwich that you don't want to eat sometimes. And we had to eat the sandwich. It didn't taste good. You had to choke on it. And we also talked about there's only going to be one team standing at the end of this. Um, but I can't be proud of prouder of this team. And every coach said is it. But I, I guess it's true because I know it's true with me. I can't be proud of this group of young men and especially these two guys uh, sitting to my right. Um, they've been nothing short of brilliant. Um, Matt Noling is one of the toughest young men that I've ever coached, and what he's done for our program has been tremendous. And you know, he hasn't got enough accolades in terms of all the things that he's done uh, from me and from everybody else. And uh, August Mahoney is going to go down as the winningest basketball player in Yale basketball history. He won four championships in his years, and he's won more games than any other body, anybody else that's put on a Yale uniform. So proud of my guys, proud of the team, and and uh, sad that uh, it had to end the way it did. Let's direct questions to August and Matt, and please remember to identify yourself before asking. Ben Rob, Yale Daily News. August, Matt, how do you sort of balance the emotions of obviously, you know, it's not the game you wanted to play, but otherwise a historic season and a brilliant run to the round of 32? August? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it definitely hurts right now. Um, each and every person in that locker room believed that we were going to go out and get the job done today. So um, the pain in your stomach is just from the the defeat. Um, but like you said, um, these past week week or two has been the best weeks of my life. Uh, winning the Ivy Championship, how we did it, and then being the second team ever in Neil Ben's basketball history to win an NCAA tournament uh, game. It's been uh, just an unbelievable last week or so. Um, and um, as much as it hurts now, I know I'm going to look back in a week, a month, a year, 10 years, whatever it is, and just be really proud that um, I was a member of this basketball team and that I was able to accomplish what we accomplished with uh, guys that I consider my, my brothers and my best friends. That And um, I'm looking forward to reunions and being able to tell some stories when I'm back. And um, and I know that th this program's in unbelievable hands with the, the younger guys coming up and the junior class below us. Uh, and uh, no doubt in my mind that they're going to be back here in this position. And um, I might not be wearing the jersey, but I'll sure as hell be uh, across the way, um, probably being the most lunatic person cheering them on. So um, it hurts now, but um, I'm just really proud of the effort we've put forth over the last week or so. And um, it's, been, it's been an unbelievable ride. Matt? Yeah. Um Similar to what August said, it, it hurts a lot right now. Uh, I think we had big expectations and, you know, got a little greedy. We wanted more. We knew we could get more. Um, but I'm really proud of our guys and, you know, the team and what we were able to accomplish this year. Like, this has only been done once in the history of Yale basketball. So, you know, we have to be proud of that. Um, but it hurts. You know, this group of guys has been – this locker room has been super special. We've been through a lot of ups and downs, and it's just brought us closer. Like – starting from our trip to Greece this summer, like we've been through a lot together. Um, and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. So it hurts right now, but 
I'm proud of every single guy in that locker room for fighting, coming to practice every day and fighting, you know, every game fighting and, and just building a closer bond that's going to last a lifetime. Last a lifetime. More questions for these two. Anything? Uh, Carter DeWeese, WIBC, L Student Radio. This is to August and Matt. Um, what does your legacy on this team mean to you? You know, you walk into the media room in John J. Lee Amphitheater and you see a picture from the 2016 victory over Baylor. Y'all have provided a similar experience to the Yale basketball program and have left a similar tremendous impact. What does that legacy mean to you? August? Uh, uh, it, uh, it means the world, I, I guess. Like, um, like you said, th that corridor of champions is, is named that for a reason, and those pictures on the wall are Yale basketball legends. So just to be, just to be amongst the, the, the few that are up there, I mean, it's, it means the world to me, just uh, knowing how much work I've put in my whole life to get into positions like this, and um, and I'm I'm, for, I'm forever indebted to Coach Jones and the coaching staff for allowing me this opportunity to uh, wear this uniform. And um, it stings that no, no, I'm not never going to wear it again. But uh, I, I can be proud of knowing what knowing what we accomplished, and uh, I'm going to hold my head really high. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think that's really set in for me yet. Like I haven't processed the whole season and like what we've accomplished. Um, but, you know, when I was getting recruited here, like walking in that hallway and seeing all those pictures, I, I never would have thought I would be doing something like that here. Um, so I'm super blessed and I'm super grateful for Coach Jones, all the coaches and, you know, athletic trainers, doctors, everybody that helped us get in this position to where we are today. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll dismiss the student athletes and return to questions for Coach. Questions for Coach. Uh, James Torman Aldridge with the Argonaut. Coach, I asked Friday, but with the Idaho band being back up here again, um, you know, just what, what that meant for you guys to have them uh, not only help you out, but to, for you guys to help them out, uh, kind of help them boost it on a national stage. Yeah, it's, it's this NCAA tournament is one of the most special things that we do in sport. And to, you know, have a group of young people come and support us is, is, is wonderful. And they're very thankful to have them. It, it means a lot to our program and the players and the fans to have someone rooting for them that doesn't, don't even really know who they are. I mean, that's something that's pretty special. That you're going to root for some people, you don't even know who they are. Um, but it's great that they came out and supported us. And I, th I thank them before the game just because, of, um, you know, I appreciate what they were able to do and, and being here and being part of this. Tim Booth with the AP. James, you mentioned the three-point shooting uh, from San Diego State. Did Was that sort of the game plan, was to try and control the inside and see if they could hit some shots from the, from the perimeter tonight? Well, you know, they, they don't normally take as many threes as they made, to, as they took tonight. They averaged seven a game, uh, seven makes a game. They made, uh, what was it, 13, I think, 13 for 27. You know, I said to the guys in the locker room, well, they can't shoot seven for 15 in the second half, and they went out and they shot six for 12. So I guess I was wrong. Um, the game plan was to try to shrink the floor as much as we could, um, to try to take away uh, Ladi at, at the basket. But the threes that they got were not off of, you know, kickouts from the post. Um, they came in, in randomly in their offense, and we gave too much space to certain guys, and they were able to knock them down tonight. Now, again, they got, they got hot and they felt good. They got comfortable and they were able to make shots. And that's what happens when you have a comfort level, you got it going. And, and every time Dick and Harry that comes off the bench, they make them as well. So we, we ran into a buzzsaw with that tonight and that's unfortunate for us. Let's go to Zoom for a question to Dan Tortora. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, you've spent so many years leading this program and we've seen a lot of success uh, recently here what has been the most rewarding part of this journey and why do you feel like we're seeing the fruits of that labor more and more from Yale recently well um you know one of the great things about it is you know we had a, a viewing party for the tournament 
uh, at the Yale Club in New York, and there were kids from my 2002 team there, 2015, 2016, 2019, 2020, and 2022 guys that all won a championship. And, you know, just to see those guys come back and support us is nothing short of brilliant. And the reason why we've been able to be successful is that we've developed a culture at our program where everybody gets better, um, everybody works together, everybody's focused on what it is that we're trying to do. And it's, it's you know, the kind of the three musketeers all for one and one for all. Um, that's the kind of mantra we kind of take on as a program. And I think that makes a difference. The culture of your program and what the locker room is like uh, I tell every kid I recruit that if you like Yale now in terms of what it is academically and what we've done basketball-wise, you're going to like it even more once you meet the people. It's a great place and they have great young men and I'm fortunate to be around them every day and, and to learn from them and to try to help them be the best versions of themselves. You know, I, I have the best job in the world and I look forward to going to it every day. Hey, Coach, Jane Barfus, also from the Argonaut. Y y you kind of touched on August and Matt on the court, but can you talk about w what they meant for y your program as a whole on and off the court? Yeah, you know, we try to have our seniors admired within the program. You know, they, they eat first when we go to uh, lunch or dinner. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones we ask in terms of, what kind of gear they want, what kind of sneakers they want to wear. So we try to make sure that we that they're admired by the younger kids so they look forward to becoming the leaders of our program. And those two young guys are some of the best people in the world. I, I'm not a yeller or a screamer, um, but there's certain guys that you can't yell at. And But those two guys, you could say anything to, to them. Um, but you really don't have to uh, because they do things the right way and, and they're, they're great people. and. Um, they're going to be sorely missed, not so much or not only for what they did on the court, but certainly what they did off the court as well. Uh, James Storm Aldridge with the Argonaut again. Both you and San Diego State had the unique opportunity to play all 14 of your guys. Um, you know, just what that meant for you and meant for the program and meant for them. Yeah, you know, you want to get a taste of this. Everybody does, you know, so no matter where you go in life, you know, you can always say you had an opportunity to play an NCAA game. And what's great about a Yale athlete is that the history will change somewhat. So instead of playing four minutes, I played 24 minutes and had 18 points and we lost the game by four. <laughs> you know, so it kind of changes a little bit. So um, it, it's great. It, listen, you know, I love all the kids in the locker room. And if you're a player at Yale on this team and you don't play a lot, it's not an indictment of who you are as an athlete and as a basketball player. It has everything to do with the guys that are playing ahead of you. Can't play everybody, right? Um, but we have some very good players, and, and we will be, they will be seen as the years go on. Anything more for Coach? Get the microphone and ask a question. Go right ahead. I, I wanted to go give you praise for the job that you've done uh, with Yale. And I know you always was a fighter and you was going to be fighting to the end. So, you know, what happened tonight was just another gut day. And we, we look forward to fighting the rest of our I feel like I'm in a court and like, um, is, there, is there a question there, uh, counselor? <laughs> For those that you don't know, that's my dad and he, he's been itching. Uh, it, it would be private and I'll ask. So my wife and your oh wife God, don't he's want going to here. say nothing. So I keep my mouth shut. All right, thank you, Pop. Right. <laughs> that was well said. That's a good place to end. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank all right. you all. Thank you.